um, just because uh, you know, I think I think big tables of data is always difficult to consume. So today we're going to talk about some charts and some graphs. Uh, we're going to do some more charts and graphs of other sorts uh, next time, I think. Yeah, Thursday. Um, so we'll be covering some more. Um, I had kind of a weird question that I thought of when I was making this slide. Um, does anybody know what the difference is between a chart and a graph? I kind of use the terms interchangeably, right? Any theories? Yeah. It's not bad. I actually think, personally, it goes there. Like, and I did a little bit of googling around for this, but quality of sources very questionable. Um, so, what their argument was, and I kind of agree with it, was that chart is kind of a collective of like a visual representation of data, right? And then a graph usually specifically refers to something with lines. Um, so, I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, but I use the terms pretty interchangeably. So feel free to do the same. Uh, let's see. I don't think this is the right window. Let me get out of this. All right. Um, I have a few more lines in the top here um, that we'll get into um a little bit later um but basically they were me trying to make things look prettier uh and failing at it so uh hopefully it will get better so uh you should have lecture six or whatever there should be one notebook in there open that up um what i tried to leave in there was kind of the, the, the stuff that you know like requires a little bunch of typing in like csv file or whatever um but mostly it's blank uh so you can try to follow along uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of revisit some of the census data uh, from last time. Um, and clicking in the correct window would actually be much more useful. All right. And so here we have census data again. Um, and then we're going to pull out a part of it, kind of like we did last time. Um, and just kind of select these particular columns to make a new table called brilliantly entitled partial. All right, so the next thing we want to do um, is make sure my cheat sheet is open because otherwise I forget what I'm doing. Um, so let's make things a little easier to read. Oh, good gracious, I'm really on fire today. Um, all right, so what might make this a little easier to read? What do you think? Besides like font size, which I'll try to make it a little bigger. Any ideas? What, what might make it better? I'll give you a hint. Columns. Yeah. Right, to be something a little bit more reasonable. Um, does anybody remember how to do that? What, what, uh, like what method I would use to uh, change the names of the columns? Right on. Um, and then, Fire up. All right. And then remember with relabel, um, it's a little weird, right? Because we actually refer to it by column index. If you think about it for half a second, it makes sense. Um, but the temptation, I think, is to type in the column, the existing column name, and then um, and try to do the relabel that way. Um, sorry. So there we go. So we got a little bit nicer name. All right. And then so how would we sort it by age? This one's rocket surgery, let me tell you. There you go. Uh, you got to have a couple of freebies in here, you know? All right. So then we can sort it by age. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the, the age of the population in the census data. Uh, when we talk about our our uh, plot or our uh, charts, sorry, um, and then as you all probably remember, what do we do if we want to go the other direction? Yeah, correct. 
So we put in descending true. Um, you know, I don't know if you've tried it, but you can also put in descending false, which is exactly the same as not putting it there. Um, and that's what we refer to as a default. Um, all right, so moving on. So, and hopefully y'all are following along because this is where it's going to get a little trickier. Um, so, who remembers from the census data that we talked about last time? Um, there's normal ages, right? And then there's one thing that's different from all the others in the age column. Does anybody remember what that is? Yeah. Yeah, it's the total, right? Um, so and just be careful the word representative, like it's it's literally the total. Um, so in our uh, data set, if we want to look at the various ages, right? If we want to do a graph of that or whatever, what we want to do is get rid of the totals, right? Does that make sense? Um, so anybody know how we would go about that? Anybody playing around with their own notebook? All right, why don't we give you a minute to play around with your own notebook? And think about how you might get rid of the 99 row or rows, really. Um, actually, I think there should be just one, but the row for uh, 999, uh, which is the totals. How would you think about doing that? As I said before, feel free to collaborate with your neighbor. Um, you know, I'd rather you didn't collaborate like with the whole classroom, but you know, one, two, three, you know, that's fine. All right, any ideas so far? All right, let's ask a different, a slightly different question. Um, how do we? Uh, I'm being really careful about my word choice. How do we um, identify certain rows in the data set? What, what's the method we would use to do that? Correct. All right. So the method is where, right? And then what column are we messing with? Go ahead. Where and? Uh, no, just where is sufficient. So what column is it that we, we want to operate on if we want to get rid of the 999 age column, right? All right, and then we want to say, so they are all numbers, right? So we can operate on them like numbers. It's not like they're strings. So what can we do to you know get rid of 999? Right, so... Um, and I don't know, personally, this always throws me off, um, but you all, all of the operations, like all the mathematical kind of operations, right, are hanging off of R, right, because, you know, where age R, right, so it's kind of trying to do English, um, and then below 999, right, so that'll give us a table that's just uh, the actual ages, right, no totals, and again, brilliantly named, no 999. All right, any questions? Make sense? All right, so now what if we wanted to, actually, we'll just talk through this one. Um, so now, um, does anybody remember? So in the sex column, we actually have zero, one, and two, right? So does anybody remember what the zero column is? Or zero uh, attributes. Yeah. Right. Correct. So, so the zero is a total again. So, in order to kind of look at just the men and women in the in the data set, we need to get rid of that total too. So, um, but once we do, then we can kind of get rid of um, the field where we were messing with, it, right? So let me, 
Let me just type this in here. Ah. Oh my goodness. All right, so now, does anybody know what this, let's see, it looks like 4 million and change um, of age seven. So what is this now? What does that represent? That's the number of people who were seven at the 2010 census, okay? And then this is 4.1 million um, and it's the number of people who they estimate for 2014 um, who were seven years old, right? So it's both genders combined, okay? So arguably you could also get this, um, oh, sorry, yeah, so what you're doing, you're getting the combined number, sorry, I was uh, getting ahead of myself. This is actually, uh, pulling just the total by like that. Um, so then we're getting rid of the column because now it's useless because we said where sex is equal to zero. So therefore it's only like, like we just have a whole mess of zero, right? So we may as well just drop the column. So yeah, totally, sorry, I misspoke. I was ahead of myself. Um, so this is the total number of nine-year-olds, right? So this is the total number of nine-year-olds. Uh, and we get rid of the column so we don't have to see it because it's a waste of in, or a waste of space, kind of. Um, so then we can do something kind of cool with that, which is uh, I don't know how many people did the did the reading before class. All right, so you may have seen this plot command. Um, I think it was in the reading. Um, so anybody have a guess what that's going to do? show graph, uh, yeah, essentially a line graph. Um, and so surprisingly, as, as people, as the age goes up, right, the number of people goes down by a lot. Um, and uh, one of the interesting things with data, right, is like there's really literally no one over 100, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so, so we see that it's about 4 million in the beginning, right? And then we uh, kind of you know, trail off. Um, but it's kind of interesting where it starts to get pretty pronounced, right? It's like 55, 60. And this is where I think graphs make it a lot easier, right? Because uh, you know, that, whole, that old phrase of, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. You can kind of immediately see a bunch of information in this that's much harder to find when you're looking at a, a, a table for the data. Um, you know, at least that's kind of the way humans react to it. So that can lead you to some interesting conclusions. Um, one thing I want to point out, which is kind of annoying, that was part of what I was screwing with before, um, was I was trying to get rid of the scientific notations. And I'm pretty sure there's a way to do it, but uh, I couldn't get it to work right. Um, so I know how to do it kind of per plot, but um, I wanted to do it globally and it wasn't doing what I thought it was. Um, so what is that? So that up top, right? What is that number, 1E6? Can we remember? Yeah. So it's scientific notation, um, and we can figure out what it is, right? If you're lazy like me and also can't count. Um, oops. Yeah. And then we can say, wait, no, sorry. Um, yeah, so if you take the, the four there, right, then we can calculate it out. Um, this would be. I'm in the right place would actually be this, right? Yeah, so um, I think it's actually 10 million, right? One of the things I hate about programming language is they don't have any separator. Oh, no, you're right. One of those. I'm, I'm bad at numbers. Um, anything that's related to arithmetic, I can't do. Uh, so, so I always just calculate it out because I have a computer in front of me. Um, so, Going back here, right? So, okay, so now we have this graph. Um, but does anybody think there's a like anything missing about this graph? Like, what would be nice if I was just going to show this picture?
Yeah, sorry. So yeah, so the units are kind of here, right? I mean, you know, age, um, and then the 186 is six, you know, these are all in millions, right? Um, and then the year. So we do have some labeling, but the title, exactly. Um, so one way we can put a title in it, right, is we can, this is a good place to use, uh, good gracious, I can't talk there. Um, we can just add a comment, right? So we can do exactly the same thing um, and just, you know, add a comment in the Jupyter Notebook. Not awesome, right? Because you have to be looking at the notebook itself to see the label. Um, so instead we can do some things that are slightly nicer um, where, yeah, so we can use a command, which I don't know if we've talked about yet uh, much, um, but it does exactly what it sounds like. And that is print. All right. And so we can just kind of print out the text like above it. Right. And so now I, now you can screenshot it, right? You put it in a slide or something like that. So it's a little bit better. Um, and then the last thing that's probably the best one um, is we can actually give it a title. Let's just try and see what it's pasted. So we can actually give the, the actual uh, graph a real title. So obviously there's other, you know, potentially cool uh, flags and stuff you can set in there. Um, but in this case, it'll do a nice job of, you know, putting a label right on the graph, right? Or a title right on the graph. Um, so there's other things there. Uh, for the most part, I think we primarily, you know, we use title a little bit, but most of these are, um, you know, exercise the reader kind of wouldn't be on a, on a test. Um, but you know, if you want to make things look nicer or you're having trouble reading them or whatever, there is a bunch of stuff you can play with there. And as Graham pointed out in the discussion section, um, you know, remember, and I'm, I can't believe I hadn't said this in the lecture, um, you know, remember there is documentation about the data science library as well as about NumPy. Um, and so all those things like that, they're just in big lists and, you know, they kind of usually are labeled what you think they might be labeled. Uh, yeah. So you can find them. So you can do other things you might want to. Um, all right, so moving on. Um, trying to see where, okay. So, another interesting thing that we can start to think about with this data set is we can compare, because this is 2010 to 2014, right? So do we have any theories about how the graph will look if we also introduce 2014? You think they, the fall off will be faster or slower? Good, that's a pretty good guess. Uh, let's see. And so the way we do that is instead of scoping our um, plot to just that one data set, we kind of include everything. And you are exactly correct. Uh, people tend to live longer as time goes on, um, you know, unless you introduce things like pandemic. Um, but the, uh, you know, so that generally speaking, you can expect it to continue to shift to the right um, as basically medicine gets better. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, so you can go and play with the colors, you can take, play with how the, you know, the numbers are written, you know, basically you can kind of modify most things. Um, and it kind of like, for most of those, I'd have to go look it up, you know, how you do it exactly. But yeah, that's the idea. Um, generally speaking, I would say like, um, uh, kind of the tool chain we're using here, so NumPy and DataSense, whatever, the, um, they do a pretty good job with defaults uh, to make it easier to read. Um, but yes, you can go modify it. Um, you know, one actually, it's one of the things to think about kind of on the, you know, uh, as I referenced in the first class on the bull shrimp front, um, you can do a lot of things by changing these colors. Um, for example, if you make one of these colors red, it will make people think that thing is worse. 
Um, same with green, except in reverse. Um, uh, there's other color theory too around like blue tends to be a more positive color for most people um, than kind of other colors. If you notice, you look at uh, like company logos, a lot of them are blue um, and that's part of why. So uh, coming from a company like Red Hat, right, which everything is red, uh, it was really interesting um, because generally speaking, red, particularly at least in the US market, um, tends to have bad connotations, right? Because it's affiliated with stock, right? Um, you know, because of streetlights. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if that's a precursor or whatever. I don't know the etymology, but that's why, or that is definitely has an impact. So when you're thinking about displaying this, and actually, if I can, I want to include an example in probably the next class where somebody was announcing tax cuts uh, and like the graph wasn't wrong, but the way it was delivered certainly makes implications of, you know, kind of an outcome um, that they wanted, which is, I think is neat, um, you know, even though it's terrible. Uh, so, all right. So moving on from there. Um, so, all right. Does anybody, especially seeing as what we saw before, does anybody have a theory about how we could get a table with just the males in it? Right? How do you take only number one? Where? Yeah. So let's see where I am here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if we just take the males uh, where sex is equal to one, um, and then we're going to drop that column again, uh, and we're going to put it in a table called males, and then we're going to do something equally brilliant by doing the same thing with females, except using the two. Um, and so now we have uh, two tables, right? One with, with that are the males and one that are females. Now, what if we want um, a table that has like, so like the table we had before, right? Had the population of in 2010 uh, by age and then uh, 2014. What if now what we want is a population of males and a population of females. Um, but I think for the example, for the example, we're just going to use uh, the year being 2014. So any ideas how we get that? You know how to do you remember how to make a new table off of other tables? So remember, we have the males table, we have the females table. Um, and that's actually all we need. Right, uh, so with columns. So the way we do that, um, oh, actually I even have with columns written there, isn't that easier? Um, all right, so does anybody remember how to select a particular column? Yeah, yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Um, so, from, okay, so this is where, you know, it's kind of like arbitrary, right? So we need the age column, right? But we know in both the female table and in the male table, um, they both have the same age column, right? The, the, the data that's in them are the same. So we can pick either one at random. Um, usually for kind of ease of reading and stuff, um, if you remember up in here, I declared the male one first. So I would usually use that as like the driver um, just to make it clear that like the association, um, but it's really just for like easy reading rather than because there's any particularly good reason for it. Um, so then we can grab the males ages, right? And we're gonna call that column males. And then we're gonna, oh, sorry, count of males of that age. Uh, and the same thing with the females. Um, and so now we have a table that has the age and then the breakdown with males and females, right? And then, should I scroll again here? So, all right. So then what might be interesting is let's compare the, um, 
basically the, the number of women and the number of men uh, for the 2014 year in a graph, right? Um, so I thought this was particularly interesting. Um, anybody notice anything interesting here? Like what, what, what conclusions can you draw from this data or from this graph? Look at the beginning and the end of the lines as, as hints. Say it one more time. Right. So women tend to live slightly longer than men. Okay. Um, and then what's interesting about the beginning? Any theories? So men, there tend to be more men alive at, you know, kind of younger than whatever this is, maybe, maybe 30, 25, something. Um, it's kind of interesting. So, um, you know, are more male birth born or, you know, are do women have a higher tendency to, to, to die young? Um, so you're not sure entirely why that is, but you can see that women tend to live longer. And up until 25, there's going to be more males than there are females, um, at least in the US, right? This is all US census data. Uh, so um, obviously, it may or may not apply in any way to any other country. But I think it's interesting. All right. So do I explain this? Oh, I think I missed that. So now, oops. So now what we want to do is okay, so let's calculate the percent female for each age. Okay. So how do you think we go about that? and then add it back into the table. Any ideas? Want to play around with it for a minute? Actually, we're just going to get the array to start with, but. All right, uh, so what we do, is we have to pull the ages out, right? By doing the female column here, which turns it into an array, right? Then we want to divide by it, right? Once, well, first we have to get the total, we have to add it all up. Then we have to divide it out. And then at the end of it, we're going to multiply it by 100 just to make it a percent. Okay? That makes sense, right? Because when we do these operations um, on a, an array, it applies to all of them. So then we end up with a big ugly array. Yay. Um, and uh, yeah, and so then we can do something to make it a little simpler, right? So we can round it to three um, and make it easier to read. So does anybody know how we would round it to three? So just as a reminder, um, this array here, right, is in the variable or in the name, right, PCT female. Um, so how would we round that to make it so we can get it just to three significant digits, uh, sorry, three digits after the decimal? Yeah. So MP round. Um, oh, except we need it in a minute. So we're just going to say email. Um, equals MP round. And again, we can do nice big operations here um, because it's an array. And then, assuming I spelled everything right, uh, let's just print it out at the end. And then, so now it's just a little, a little simpler. Um, and now we can add that to our table. Right, and we're just going to use with column again.
If I the correct friend, sometimes the helpers are not very helpful. Okay, so now we have a percent female as a column into our table. Um, so now we might be able to use that to further uh, do our plots, right? Or, you know, charts. So it's funny, uh, Graham and I were talking about before the class about uh, the word plot. And I was kind of saying I never use the word plot to describe a, a group, and now I can't stop saying it today. I don't know what the deal is. Um, okay, so now we can plot that out. Well, think about it. I'm gonna be wrong. Oh, casing. <clears throat> All right, so now what we did was we created a graph that shows the uh, change, right, over time of women versus men, right? So, so before you could tell visually, right, that they were different, that the, basically the population was becoming increasingly female as they got old, as everybody got older. Um, but this shows just that, right? So we start off, right, it's slightly below 50%. Um, up until about whatever this is, maybe 30 ish. Um, and then basically it becomes more and more of a population, right? Because this is a percentage uh, over time, right? So now we can actually show the thing we want to kind of point out rather than uh, rely on the reader to uh, look at the difference. Does that make sense? So you want to think about like what's the best way to help somebody understand the data that you're telling them, right? Uh, and so sometimes you wanna rejigger it a bit so that the thing that you're pointing out is accurate, like accurate, it's not quite the right word as much as like you can give a real number to it, right? All right, so um, let's see, what was the next thing? I hope I could read today. Um, All right, so one thing that's a little disingenuous here, right, um, is as it kind of says in the comment below, because this isn't scaled to zero, this looks really pronounced, right? So this is the kind of thing I was talking about before. You might want to be careful about um, presenting your data that way because somebody's going to glance, or someone could, right, glance at that and see it as very pronounced when, in fact, if you scale it, oh, piecing again, um, you type one thing by hand and then everything's broken. But in fact, see, it's not as pronounced when you look at it as you look at the whole scale. So um, going back to more examples of things you can do to uh, kind of modify the behavior of the printed graph, right? We can set this y limit, right? We can say, okay, on a y scale, use zero to 100, okay, instead of just whatever the data has. So, again, that's something that's kind of, you know, we probably won't test for it. So, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't grade school. Show me. It doesn't show the correct answer. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yes, but we have to figure out the tech to do so. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. All right, does that make sense so far? All right, so let me see. I think. Yeah, so now we want to talk about 
a uh, different kind of graph. Okay, so so far what we've talked about is, I mean, know what those are called? The kind of graph we've been doing. Those are line graphs, okay, because they have a line. Um, now we're going to talk about scatter plots. All right. So when you have a line graph, like you have to have something that you can kind of compare on a line, right? Uh, a lot of data doesn't work that way, but a line graph can also be misused, um, you know, by trying to plot a line for data that doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so, you know, you do have to think about what you're trying to graph in terms of what type of graph to create. Uh, and sometimes different ones will show uh, kind of the, you know, your output differently or more clearly or whatever. Uh, sometimes they'll be ludicrous, but other times it'll be like, oh, this, this makes a little bit more sense as a scatter plot than it does as a line graph or as a histogram or actually we'll talk about histograms later. Um, but yeah. So we're going to talk about a scatter plot now, but we're going to use a different data set um, that is more akin to a scatter plot or more uh, conducive. Um, and so this data set, uh, which you should also have, um, is the you know basically the actors then how much money they have made from not they made how much money the movies they have been in have made uh over you know for all the movies they've been in um so harrison ford 4.8 billion dollars right that's a lot of movies um then the number of movies that it was across right 41 movies have been in um, and then the average per movie is about 118 million. Um, and then uh, the biggest one, which one was the one that generated the most, is that uh, number one movie. And then total gross um, is for, I think it's for that movie. Uh, so, so, yeah. So now, as you can see, like trying to draw a line through that, like that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? You could compare like the total gross for actor or something like but like why you know there's no relationship really between harrison ford and tom hanks right except they both have generated a lot of money from movies um you know so you wouldn't put them on a line that doesn't really make a lot of sense so instead we can think about doing something different and we can do something that's called a scatter plot um All right, so the first thing we can do is we can take a scatter plot of the number of movies and then how much money it's made, right? Um, so, you know, there seems to be, which is kind of logical, a correlation between the number of movies you've made and how much money they've made. Um, but, you know, it's hard to say. Um, but it does give you some insights into the data to try to say, Okay, you know, who who are these people, right? So um, then they have. Let's see if you can, I can make it so the the whole thing fits on the screen. Um, yeah. So who do you think this is? Right. They've made approximately uh, forty-ish movies with a total gross. You know, uh, maybe nearly five billion. Harris Ford, right? And then who might that be? Right, so Sam Jackson. So, what I think is interesting here is that they grossed about the same amount, but they're actually quite far apart, right? Because Samuel Jackson has actually made a lot more movies, right? So, each individual movie didn't actually make as much money. Um, so, you know, so one of the things that you use a scatter plot too is, is to try to understand things like that, right? So how, you know, the relationship between these two people, um, you know, and you can see it in the data, but not if it's in the middle, right? It's a lot harder to find in the middle. When it's at the edges, it's easier. Um, but you can see, you know, we have some serious outliers too, right? So you have somebody who did almost 80 movies, um, but actually didn't generate all that much revenue for the, in the movies they did. Um, I don't know if they're on. Yeah, we have to resort. I don't know who that is, but 
you know, we, we see there's an anomalous person here. Um, you know, there's also a really anomalous person here, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, and let me make sure, let me see if I'm going to get ahead of myself by talking about that. Um, yeah, so, so I point out this anomalous person here. Um, you know, what is that like? Maybe less than 10 movies, right? That has generated, you know, nearly or a little bit over 3 billion in gross revenue. Um, so, does anybody have any theories who that might be? I don't know if they're on the list there. No. All right, we'll get to it in a minute, but think about it. It's kind of interesting. Um, so, another way we can look at that same data set with a slightly different perspective is we can say, okay, what if we want to know who's making um, the most per movie, right? Or so it looks like, you know, 100 million is kind of where the like center is, right? Um, there doesn't seem to be a ton of correlation between uh, the number of movies you make and how much they make per movie, right? Um, because they all kind of, you know, they all tend to make right around the same amount, uh, except for one person up there, right? Um, and so that's, you know, generally called like an outlier, right? Because one of the things that you often want to try to do here uh, with a scatter plot is when we talk about lines, is actually create a line that goes through this, except. The line doesn't necessarily hit any points, but it wants to, if you want to see a trend line of some kind. Personally, I think the trend here is arbitrary, but you can imagine this is a different data set or something. You had all these dots here, right? You might want to cut the line from here that would show you the trend, right? Um, you know, but I, I don't think it's legitimate to say if you make a hundred movies, you're gonna make zero dollars, which is what that line would tell you. Um, so that's why this data set for that example is not a good one, but you know. Um, so, as I said before, that person who's up there, that outlier, they're not in the top table. So, how would we find out who that is? Because, we'll, you know, outliers are interesting, right? So, what, like, how would we guess or how would we? Calculate or discover who that person is. So we have the table. So we can say actors dot, and then what would we do? Yeah. Sort by number of movies. Um, okay, but that would give me this person at the top, right? Oh, maybe you're right. Oh, let's see. Um, is that the field? Yeah. You are correct. The other way you could do it, uh, or what's another way you could try to figure that out? For some reason, I was thinking of this, it would be uh, the number of movies be the highest number first. I don't know why. Um, so, what would be another way to figure that out? Any other ideas? Using the same kind of logic, just different. Yeah. So yeah, you could look at the average per movie, which would give you. Like theoretically, they're making a lot per movie. Um, that's a little rougher. Like I like this way, or the other way I was kind of looking for was um, just kind of selecting for it directly by doing something like that, right? So we can just say where the uh, average. Oh, this is actually average per movie, right? Oh, sorry, what was that? I was thinking it was um, uh, total. Um, but yeah, so you just select for the individual one, you know there's only one that's over 400, so you can get to the value too. 
Um, so the reason this is interesting, does anybody know who Anthony Daniels is? How many people have seen Star Wars or any of the Star Wars movies? Hands. Oh my goodness. The end of the world. Uh, all right. So have you ever heard of C3PO? So it's a robot character in the Star Wars movies. Um, I thought he appeared in every one of them, but apparently he didn't. He only appeared in uh, like maybe six or seven or something out of the total gamut. Um, but Anthony Daniels plays that robot, uh, basically dressed up in a suit. Um, so he's made a total of seven movies, but because the Star Wars franchise is so big, um, he made a ton of movies. I think that data should be Oh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so this data set might be too, too old, but uh, so he basically just made all his money off the, off the Star Wars fan set. Um, and the even funnier part, right, is that you never even actually see him. He is in a mask the entire, in all the movies. Um, so I just think it's kind of neat. Uh, if you haven't seen Star Wars, you really should. That will not be on the test, however. Um, all right. So that was Santa Claus, right? So uh, when you um, see, I swear I, I thought I had a slide about this. Um, oh yeah, okay. Wait, is it here? Yeah. All right. So. Line graph, right? Um, and scatter plot, scatter. So this is, you use the plot method to get a line graph. That's probably why I started saying plot all the time. Um, to get a scatter plot, you use a scatter, okay? Because plot is another one of those kind of generic graphy type terms uh, where it kind of means put stuff on a line or put stuff on a, on a graph, right? It doesn't, uh, it's kind of generic. So this is very much the default of a lot of scenarios where you need a graph. So as a result, it's just called plot. Scatter is a little less frequent, so it's called scatter. Um, and we'll talk about one more in a minute. Um, so y'all can read, right? But um, you know, you have to have a the x-axis has to have an order, right? The two the two axes have to be ordered, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. All right, um, and then. Let's see. Oh, and then this is another one that comes up a lot too, is that there has to be only one Y value for each X value. Um, I think an example could be. Uh, no, but um, just keep in mind, you may, you may have more than one row for any given X, right? Um, so as a result, you can't draw a line this fast, okay? Um, bummer, I can't see anything. Um, and then, you know, Commonly, the x-axis is time or distance, um, but it, it really can be anything. But the point is that it needs to be sequential. It needs to mean something to go, you know, from left to right uh, and from bottom to top, right? Um, and then scatter plots are when when you don't have that, right? Uh, and you want to just see what kind of relationship something has to something else, uh, and so you can do that. You also have a limitation of, uh, I mean, generally. Uh, where you still need one X, one Y. Okay. All right. Um, now we'll go back to the notebook. Um, and my guess is of all the graphs that we've done so far, these are probably the ones that you remember doing in school mostly. Is that true? Mostly, most people know bar graphs. Yeah, uh, what I think is interesting is, um, yeah, I'll get to it in a minute. All right, but so this is a bunch of movies. Um, so name of the movie, who produced the movie or the studio that produced the movie. Um, gross, you know, so how much money the movie made. Um, adjusted for inflation uh, here. And then the year it was released. Um, what I'm a little unclear on is if the gross is in that year or total. You know what I mean? Because just because a movie came out in a year doesn't mean you can't make money off of it later. Um, so whatever, doesn't matter. But that's what we're looking at here. Um, 
and then but what we might want to do is let's maybe simplify the table a little bit um, by let's see um, by kind of taking these you know and uh, putting them uh, not scientific notation pairs but basically getting rid of some of the uh, you know put it in terms of millions so that the numbers are a little easier to read um, so I'll screw that up. So I miss one. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, I actually forgot a whole thing. My bad. Um, so yeah, so this is just um, to get the top adjusted. So we're just going to actually uh, work with ten hooks, right? So we use this test as a tape, um, and we're going to get the top ten um and put them in something called top adjusted then we can modify it so that we can essentially simplify one of the columns by creating a new column that is actually in millions okay just to make it a little simpler to read um so this is kind of like relabeling right you you know you might want to modify the data to make it a little easier to understand uh especially when you know the digits on on these numbers out here you know don't really matter that much to trying to understand these data. They might have, they might matter in some cases, but you know we want to use that for when we do um, or when it matters. Um, all right, just checking how we're doing time too. Um, so yeah, so here is my cool example of why don't we do that as a line graph, right? So this is by Amount of money made given the year, right? Uh, maybe there's something interesting here, right? Apparently, movies did not do very well in this time frame. Um, so, not a lot of sense, right? Because there's there's not a lot of relationship that actually meets makes those x and y's work well together. Um, so instead, we can do a bar graph. Uh, does anybody know how you would do a bar graph for this? I can't remember if it's covering the reading already or not. Um, so they may have an, an educated wild guess. Yeah. Close. How you make a bar graph. Yeah, so so very, very close. Um, if we wanted to do a vertical graph, it would just be bar. Um, but this one, I'll show you why. We actually want to do a horizontal graph, um, and some of the fix that bug. I don't know what that is. Um, not very useful down here, right? Uh, so instead, if we do a horizontal graph, that would be a lot easier to read. Um, and so, so this graph makes sense for this data set, right? Um, movie, how much money it made, right? So bar graphs. Um, you know, are in a lot of ways they they need relationships as well. But you want to use a bar graph when you know you want to compare them. You could do this as a line graph theoretically. Um, it'd be kind of harder to see probably. Um, a lot of people find these you know this style uh, more representative or simpler to understand. Um, so that's when we play around with bar graphs. Um, any questions so far? All right, cool. Um, so now we are going to do a brief interlude um, with the operating assumption that I'm not sure, why did that happen? Uh, the operating assumption that everyone here has their phone. Uh, so if you can't read the QR code, we can give you the there's the actual form. Uh, but I recommend trying the QR code would be a lot simpler to type. Um, I don't know why these are so unpopular. I love the QR codes. They're like so useful, especially when you're giving a talk. Um, but they are ridiculously, I don't know why, they've never kind of caught on. Um, so what this is going to take you to is a brief class survey. Um, 
uh, a brief class survey uh, where basically what I want to tell you. So none of the questions are required. I would really appreciate you answering them all. Um, you know, if it's a text field and it's not working for you, just put in NA or something like that. But try to answer them all. Uh, kind of, uh, we're going to use the the questions that are kind of unrelated to the class for the most part um, as a future exercise. So like we'll actually go and actually try to do some inferences based on that data set. So if you could go fill it out, that would be cool. You would have to, you should have to log into your PU account on Google Drive. Um, and I'll give you a few minutes to fill it out. So this is the equivalent of, remember that question eight and nine on the first homework? This is that survey that I thought was working, but was not. Uh, so same, same goal uh, a little bit later in the semester. Everybody get to it? Anybody having any trouble? Yeah, cool. So anybody got any questions wrong yet? Put the incorrect side you sleep on. All right, show of hands for complete. Okay. All right, show of hands are complete. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and submit it. Uh, one quick thing I wanted to, I forgot to mention because I got backwards on the slides. Um, so when we talk about um, bar graphs, uh, they're often referred, they will often be referred to as categorical data, okay? So a category of data. Um, and so if you are thinking about the, uh, you know, in this case, right, we have these, these are categories, right, but it's just kind of like naming, you know, a lot of the time I'm trying to kind of cover all the words you might hear uh, when referencing these kinds of things, um, rather than any of them being right. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, if you see category data or categorical data, uh, this is the kind of thing they're talking about. Um, all right, so now that everybody did the survey. Um, I was hoping you could play around a little bit and hopefully you can read that. Um, but so could you create a bar chart of the age of the number of years since release for the 10 highest growth, grossing movies um, thus far? Uh, so you should have your notebooks and you should have the data like the line for to read the CSV already. Um, so if you want to take a few minutes to try to figure that out, uh, then maybe let me know, maybe raise your hand briefly. Uh, when you think you figured it out. Uh, like I said before, feel free to collaborate with your neighbor. Uh, 
totally fine. This is not a, an assignment. Realize I don't actually have the answer. Oh, good God. Yeah, let's talk about class. Uh, All right, anybody have any theories? All right, you want to try to talk him through it? So what's the first thing we need to do, right? First thing we need to do, go ahead. Oh, sorry, a little off. Yes, um, but you can certainly use, uh, oh, I guess you don't all have this already built, right? Um, 
Okay. So yeah, so first thing you need is this table, right? The top 10 is up, right? And I forgot I had not left it so you, you would have missed that. Um, so, okay, so why don't we do it collectively? All right, so let's say we have top 10 adjusted. What would be the next thing we would do? So now we need to know the age of any given movie, right? So how do we get to the age for any given movie? Yeah. Right. So, oh boy, my typing skills rule. So, to get the age, we take 2021 minus basically the year, right? All right, so now we have an array. Okay, so then what do we do with this array? Well, let's just for simplicity, um, we're going to say, I'm really good at naming things. Um, so, oh boy, let's make that lowercase so I don't screw that up later. Um, so we're gonna just assign that to a name. Okay, so now we have the array. So what do we do with the array now? Yeah. How do we add it into the table? Yes, sorry. Yeah, so we would do with column uh, for top ten adjusted, um, and then sorry, what's the what's the first parameter we give it? Uh, right, and then. There we go. So now we have the age in there. So obviously now we want to assign that to a name to make it easier. Um, and this is actually with the name I was using for the uh, table itself earlier. Um, so now we have it in a name. So now what do we do to get it to print as a bar graph? Right. So we say with age, uh, and we're going to do another horizontal one just for the sake of this data. Um, and then we give it, let's say, we would just want to look at the titles and the ages, right? So title and age. And there we go. Right. So Maybe not the best way out, right? I want to think about it in reverse or, you know, or like number of years ago. I don't know. Um, but, you know, so a couple of these movies are really old uh, now, which I don't think I realized that they're like 80 something years old. Um, so, but this is kind of it. And then obviously, you know, kind of unfortunately, right? It's not sorted, but we can fix that, right? With a sort. Um, and, but there we go. Now we have the top 10 adjusted. Or top 10 movies, you know, by money or whatever, and uh, how long ago they came out. Cool. All right. Uh, that's it for today.